absolutely gorgeous very kind of a haunting look to it so a mill and i suppose um living quarters as well but it's down in this beautiful forest Hi guys, so today we're in Tintern Abbey and you can see the Abbey right behind me there. It's actually a beautiful building but the reason I'm bringing you here today is to see the church. Now I will do some footage on the Abbey itself but we're going to visit the church that sits on the grounds of Tintern Abbey itself. So we have an absolutely beautiful day today. Um, you come down by Tintern Abbey and walk this beautiful path and I'll bring you out onto the bridge as well and we'll have a look back at Tintern Abbey but uh, there's a church that leads just up on this road there so that's where we're heading first but just look at that for scenery absolutely gorgeous and if I just pan around that's Tintern Abbey there So we're just taking some of the, the views around here. Spent many a time here with picnics and with the kids when they were smaller. But I never actually went into the church itself. So it'll be interesting to see what we find in there. Now I do see ruins of a building there as well. I think the church then is up to its the left of that. But I will bring you across the bridge just to show you some of the, the views looking back onto the abbey itself. Yeah, so on that sign there, it says church and graveyard before we go just look at that so we're in the area of salt mills Right, so I'm presuming that may have been the old entrance. Just here then, you can see the ruins of the church. So the structure we see today was probably built in the 1500s. Now. And I'm not going to get over the style, so I'll use the gate instead. Now straight away. I can see a headstone here, leaning forward. Here lies the body of Reverend Joshua Howell, who departed this life, and we can see 1785 there. 
and he was 42 years old. And you can see the way they wrote Joshua. That's the S there and it always kind of makes me feel firstly that's an F I'm looking at. Now we will go inside as well. But let's take a little walk up around here. Now I can also see markers here on the ground. This one looks like it's a, a newer headstone. Patrick O'Toole, 1932, his daughter Kathleen, 1955, his wife Bridget, 1963, and their son, 1988. And there's an Evelyn there as well, 1993. Her dear mother, Anne Elizabeth, 1959, age 76. Also her son-in-law, Richard, 1946, age 36. And her husband, William, 1962, aged 82. Now, I want to continue walking up along here to read some of these ones up the back Mary Ann Furlong 1949 aged 61 and her husband John John excuse me 1982 aged 92 so a good age there for both of them. Unfortunately, all writing is gone from there. And these ones look quite old. And nothing much to read there either. Now I didn't bring my torch because the light when it's so sunny, it doesn't actually help at all. This one has toppled over. This one says, this stone was erected by, looks like Margaret, in memory of, can't read some of that, uh, who departed this life. 1791 there, not sure it'll pick it up. Age 61 years. And it looks like there's a Mary there as well. And that looks like it's also maybe 1791 too. Not sure whether you can see that. Just there. Here lies the body of Mary Doyle who departed this life. 1774, age 25. Here lies the body of, looks like Anne, 1754 there, and Patrick. 1770 wrote there. Patrick was seven, sorry, he was 68. Writing is slightly different there. And this one then I can see 1792. And that's Margaret Roach, it looks like. She was 54. An old cross here. This one straight away I can see 1796. This one is beautiful here, light the body of um 
looks like Martha Neville, late of Tintern, who departed this life July the 23rd, 1786, age 60. That's a beautiful one. And we have a really nice one here as well, lovely designs. This tomb was placed by Jean Shaw in memory of her grandfather, Robert Stafford, and also her mother, Mary Ann, alias Shaw, who departed this life December 1816. Very hard to read there. And it has beautiful designs. It's like the lamb there on the cross. Beautiful cross here. And this is for Margaret Power, who died January 1920, also her husband Michael, 1932. And two grandchildren who died young, and their son John. And then there's his wife Kate there as well. What a beautiful, it actually looks quite new. And just there then in the background you can see what remains of the church. Erected by Mary Kennedy, alias Jones, in memory of her husband Thomas Kennedy, who departed this life August 22nd, 1813 or 15, not quite sure, aged 50, her son John, who departed this life, 1813, aged just three months, and also their daughter Teresa. She died in 1820, and it looks like she was only four when she passed. Yeah, four years also, her daughter, Mary Kennedy, who died July 22nd, 1850, aged 39, and her daughter, Margaret. So very, very sad for them there. You see a little, beautiful little angel there. hope the camera can pick that up. We have another one here. You can barely make out the, the wings and the little face. Really pretty. Lovely designs on this one. And this is in memory of Francis Brown, who died December, October, excuse me, 1917, aged 77, and his wife Catherine. And she passed away in 1887. Lovely designs on that one. Now I can see a lot of markers around here. This one looks old as well, but I'm not sure we'll be able to read it. 1780, I think, just there. Age is gone. I do see Murphy, but nothing else there we'll be able to read, unfortunately. Another little cross just here. And a lot more markers. And the writing is all but gone from this one as well. And you can see quite a few markers around. People have etched their names into what was went wet cement, I'd imagine. We have these rails here, look at these. Unfortunately, not going to be able to get in there to read them. Something else there, 1812, obviously a tomb, like that, 
doorway. Wow. Several tombs in here, some on the ground. Guys, just here. One six eight seven sixteen eighty seven. But what caught my eye actually was the the writing, the script on it. Now I'm gonna see if I can find a better uh, picture somewhere to overlay on this one, but it's six one six eight seven for sure. Wow. I hope the camera picks it up. But I'll find a picture I'm sure online to put over that to show you the beautiful writing. Here lies the remains of John Colclock. C O L C L O U G H, eldest son of Bagnall, by his second wife, Frances, daughter of Major Richard. Um, he departed this life March 1840, in the 29th year of his life. This stone was erected by, in memory by his sister. That one we can read. This one says 1812 on it. So all these are, and I know I'm going to pronounce the surname incorrectly, but it looks like Col Clock. Now look at this one. This is quite unusual. Um, I see what I think might be maybe Latin, and then down the bottom here lies the body of is it Sir Anthony Cole. And it's spelled slightly different here. Knight, eldest son of Richard. Okay, so the, to the best of my understanding, this um, is really, really hard to read because it's kind of an old English script. But it says, Here lies the body of Sir Anthony Colclock, Knight, eldest son of Richard Colclock, of Wool Stanton in Staffordshire, Esquire, who came first into the land the 34 year of Henry VIII and was captain of the pensioners, in which place and others of greater charge he continued a most faithful servitor during the life of Edward the Sixth and Queen Mary and until the 26th year of over most noble Queen Elizabeth. He died the 9th of December 1584, leaving behind his wife, um, seven sons and five daughters. So you can just have a look there, guys, the way it's wrote. It's quite hard to read it. It's like there's no spacing between the words. There is a little bit, like a little mark in between. That looks like Sir to me, but it's spelt S-Y-R. Anthony, you can see that name, Knight, eldest, and look at that, the way that's spelled. I'm presuming that son of Richard, of who, Stanton in Staffordshire, that to me looks like Esquire, who came of the pensioner, it looks like, in which place, and others of greater charge he continued looks like the v is a a u but i'm not really sure what it says but 1574 there and maybe 84 that is very very interesting so i have the the phone just on a an extension and it's actually quite handy when you're 
wanting to uh, read things up high or kind of take a look at um, churches and stuff over the wall if you get me because otherwise I'm too short to show you look at that window Right, I'm going to go back out the gate, down the path, and I'm going to cross the bridge to give you a little look at Tintern Abbey itself. I've just noticed this Paul Whitfield. Wow, look at that. Hand carved. Lovely Celtic designs on it there as well. So, I want to walk back down towards the, the bridge, which is this area is so quiet, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I want to bring it, yeah, I'm going to bring it across the bridge here and take a look back at Tintern Abbey and maybe then we'll be able to take a closer look at Tintern Abbey itself um, but yeah this place is just beautiful it's, it's so quiet but something else guys I'm actually wearing my merch um, so I'm delighted that it came it actually came quite fast but I'll link the description to the store um, down below as I said, it is extremely hot today. It's probably 24 degrees, which is warm for Ireland and probably warm for me, maybe a little bit too warm for me. So I'm going to give you a look in the distance here at Tintern Abbey. Let we get across another little bit, maybe here. There's a little river running up. We're standing on the the bridge now. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. standing on the bridge and on the other side then has beautiful scenery as well right so we're going to walk back along and uh, I'll let you take a closer look then at the abbey itself when we get near Right, so on our way back, we've spotted these two. And this is William Marshall and Isabel de Clare. Uh, William was born in 1146 and he was knighted at a young age of 20. And by 36, he had earned a fortune from jousting and was himself never defeated. And Isabella then was born in 1172 and she was actually the eldest child of Richard de Clare or Strongbow. But look at these. These are beautifully carved absolutely gorgeous and then Isabella or Isabel I think it is properly pronounced look at her absolutely gorgeous amazing detail there So Isabella was actually 18 when she married 
William. He was actually in his early 40s and was the greatest heiress of her time. The marriage gave William everything a Norman noble required, land in Wales and Ireland. Money, ten children, and made William the most powerful of the English barons. We're actually going to walk back through the woods here. Now guys, these are actually the toilets, would you believe? I've never seen anything like that. How amazing. This Cistercian monastery was founded in 1200 by William Earl Marshall on lands held through his marriage to the Irish heiress Isabella de Clare. This abbey founded as a daughter house of Tintern Major in Wales is often referred to as Tintern Devoto. Uh, the nave chancel tower chapel still stand in the 16th century the old abbey was granted to the Col clock family and i probably have pronounced that incorrectly and soon after the church was partly converted into living quarters and further adapted over the century the Col clocks occupied the abbey from the 16th century until the mid 20th so we've seen the the two um, wooden kind of statues there of um, Isabella and her husband William. So imagine they lived here. Absolutely fantastic, isn't it? There was a little bit of information here. Tintern walkways. The Cistercian monks were fo who founded Tintern Abbey in the early 1200 AD were very much a closed order who relied on their own abilities and knowledge. For this reason they did most of the necessary manual labour themselves apart from the environs of Tintern. They also had been granted lands to the north and east including Kilmore, Kilkart, Bano, Bano Island, Tom Haggard, Kilcowan and the Salty Islands in order to administer and work these lands. Groups of monks and lay brethren would leave the abbey at the beginning of each week, walk to their respective destinations, carry out their work and then return to the abbey at the weekends. Some of these journeys might involve a 20 mile walk. Much of their route would have consisted of salt inlet, bog, woodland and all of which were more prevalent throughout the baronies of Fort and Bargy in those centuries. So the woods that we've seen here and which we've walked through were a resource which the order made great use of apart from timber for building the woods provided a variety of wild fruits, trees, tree nuts and in autumn food for both people and domestic animals. Absolutely gorgeous, very kind of a 
haunting look to it. So a mill and I suppose um, living quarters as well. But it's down in this beautiful forest. And would you look what we have? Isn't he gorgeous? Also carved out of wood. able to get inside today and there's not really an awful lot to be seen inside. I actually think the outside is absolutely beautiful. So guys that's all from Tintern Abbey and Tintern Church um, it's absolutely beautiful down here but it's getting quite busy now um, and hence we couldn't get inside to tour or we would have to kind of hang around a lot longer but for now take care god bless and i'll talk to you all soon <laughs>